Hello, and welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, we are going to improve our English vocabulary by doing uh, some word building exercises. Very simple. We're gonna we're gonna look at a category of words, depending on uh, well. We're going to start with body parts, for example. Maybe we'll look at animals, maybe tools. I don't know. We're going to look at nouns that you probably all know that you learned uh, when you first started learning English. Very basic nouns in a, some kind of uh, in, in a group. We all learn uh, like parts of the body. What I have found teaching is uh, <laughs> very often often new English learners do not realize that in fact uh, many of the common nouns that they know uh, can actually be used as verbs as well and we're going to explore that idea today in class so we'll uh, start by compiling a list of a certain category of nouns and then we're, I'm going to teach you a little trick. We're going to add ed to the ends of these words to see if we can form regular verbs. And then we'll talk about uh, what they mean as a verb and maybe try using them in a sentence to make sure we understand. Uh, hello, Pavel. How are you? Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Nice to see you. To see you as well. How, how are you doing? No, uh, I I don't I don't do something special. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, some uh, chores, some uh, er 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 errands. <laughs> okay, just doing some chores, doing some errands. Today. Yes, Do, I'm doing some chores, doing some errands. Uh, 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 nothing changed. <laughs> Not, nothing uh, was changed. <laughs> okay, nothing new. All right. Okay, well, welcome to the class. Let me uh, also welcome Heidi. Hello, Heidi. Hi, hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, oh. sounds good. Uh, yeah, no, sounds good. Uh, welcome to the class, Heidi. Uh, okay, guys, uh, I'm, I'm going to do, uh, we're going to do a little word building today, and uh, we're going to start about, start by... Is it a game? No. Um, not, not really. We could make it a game. <laughs> <laughs> It's possible. Uh, I, think, I think I'm deriving this from a game, but um, uh, I, I want to get to the, the heart of the matter. I, this is very simple. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make a list. I'm going to do a screen share, and then I don't know where all the students are. It's, the class is fully booked, but I don't know where everybody is. Well, anyway, we're going to make a list of uh, parts. We're going to actually attempt to see how many of these parts of the body, which you probably know because it's quite simple, how many of these parts of the body can be uh, made into a verb. Uh, all right, now we've got a couple other people to join us. Hello, Mustafa. Hey, Mustafa. Hey, teacher. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, welcome. Awesome. No, I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> mm, I forgot. No, I, I mean, no, yes, I had a snack, but uh, I really, I haven't eaten dinner yet. I'll have to wait. Huh. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> I had to pull something out of the freezer, and I forgot to do it before my classes earlier. So it, it's all thawing. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to need some help from you, Pavel, because we have a, another student who's joined us, and I... Alexander. Alexander. Okay. My name is Alexander. My name is Hi, Alexander. Alexander. Okay. 
Your name is uh, Alexander? Uh, you could uh, ask me Sasha. Sasha? Uh, my name is Sasha. Yeah, Sasha. All right. You can call me Sasha. That would be better. Oh, All right. okay, okay. Okay. Hi, Sasha. Welcome to the class. Hello. Nice. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Okay. Very simple. We're going to start out real easy, guys. This is uh, pretty much fairly elementary. And then we're going to get more complicated because uh, we're going to start off just, we're going to take turns until we exhaust ourselves. We're just going to list some parts of the body. Simple as that. Um, Pavel, just give me one part of the body. Part of the body. Uh, yeah. Head. Head. <laughs> Great. Uh, terrific. Uh, Heidi. Nail. Nail. Oh, that's interesting. What? Okay. Did I see <laughs> What? Mustafa says. Well, uh, I'll accept that. Toenail. Fingernail. All right. We often in English refer to our nails just, I'm going to have my nails done. I need to cut my nails. We actually very rarely say uh, toenails or fingernails. We just usually say nails. So I, I will definitely accept that. That's, uh, that's definitely reasonable. Of course, usually we say plural, nails. Uh, Musafa. Leg. Leg. All right. Uh, oh, let's see. This is going to be interesting. Sasha? Uh, toe, finger. Wait, stop. Go. <laughs> uh, okay. Pavel, you got another one for me? Oh, food. Foot. Uh, <laughs> okay. I see interesting things happening with when we try to use these as verbs. Heidi, do you have another one? Uh, the Adam's apple. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, all right. <laughs> Adam's apple. All right. That's, that's the lump in your throat. Men have a big one. Women don't really, it protrudes, uh, sticks out. Women have one, but it doesn't really stick out like a male's does. Okay, Mustafa? We said hand. No, hand. 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 Okay, hand. Uh, and, and, and we can palm, say hand. We can say palm. P L A M. Or P A L M. P A L M. Yeah, save that one. We'll go around again. That's a good one. Give it to me next time. Stasha? Um, uh, arms. Arms. Sure. Arm. Now we're going to be changing these into verbs, so I, as much as I can, I want to avoid the plural. Let's uh, let's try one more round. Let's say, Pavel. Armpit. <laughs> Armpit. Okay. Uh, just okay. I'm going to teach you guys a little tagalog uh, because I I'm an American, but I live in the Philippines. Just because it's funny, the word for uh, or armpit in Tagalog is kili kili. <laughs> now you know you know Tagalog. You guys all know one word in Tagalog, kili kili. <laughs> okay, Heidi. Belly button. <laughs> Can I just use belly? Belly button. Yeah, I know, but I want to use belly. Hmm. Only the uh, belly. Yeah, you'll see why later. Button. Uh, I'll, I'll write. All right, I'll write button. But okay, it's uh, okay. You'll understand what I mean. I'll I'll show it to you later. Mustafa, can I use palm? Uh, that's yeah. a good one. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a very a good, good one. one for this for this exercise. It works very well. Uh, Sasha, one more. Uh, shoulders. Ah, that's a good one as well. Okay. Why are they good ones? Why am I reacting? Um, I'll tell you why. Because now we've got this, you guys all know English words, nouns for parts of the body. That's fairly basic elementary English. But now what happens uh, when we add, we're going to add ED. 
all right? Headed. Can I use this as a verb? All right? Now you're going to pick your, well, manuals with us now. Hi, manual. Welcome. And goodbye. <laughs> okay. And goodbye. Uh, okay, Pavel, this was your word. Can you use to head? Can you use headed as a verb? Of course, we're adding ed. If these are turn out to be, in fact, regular verbs, we should be able to add ed to make a past tense verb. Is this uh, a verb, Pavel? I don't know. Maybe it's uh, <laughs> is thinking. No, think. No. No, it's not. However, I will tell you this can, in fact, be a verb. Have you ever heard this? Headed. No? Okay. Well, here's where it can become a game for you guys. <laughs> All right. Who does know this as a verb? Yeah. It's like Heidi? Um, um, okay. Okay. Let, Heidi, let Heidi go first. Uh, Heidi? Are we headed to the station? We headed to the station. Headed back home. We headed back home. We headed to the station. Very good. Yes, in fact, to head, you go somewhere. You go in a specific direction. We use this verb as these guys just did. We headed to the station. We headed back home. We pretty much always say where we're going. Um, even uh, we headed north, for example. Uh, we're always we always talk about a direction. So uh, also the it can be also used as a phrasal verb to head out. Uh, to head out means we we're leaving. Uh, I've got to get going. I need to head out if I want to make it to work on time. I'm gonna, I have to go right now. I'm going to head out, so I'm going to leave. So not only can head be a verb, uh, headed to head somewhere, but head out can mean to leave as a phrasal verb. So not only is it a verb, it can be a phrase used as part of a phrasal verb. Okay, one point for you, Heidi. <laughs> okay, nails. Now, obviously, we can't add ed nails, which is why I was. Oh. Which is why I was not writing down yeah. s's. Nailed. Can we use yeah. that as a verb? Uh, before a typhoon, we nailed the, the wind. We nailed the window. Yeah, probably we nailed the window shut. But yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a question. We should use uh, this uh, word in the past tense? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, I should clarify that. That's a very good question. No, 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 no. The, the verb is to nail. Okay. Um, every day I nail another board to my wall, if I want to use it in the, in the simple present tense. The reason I'm adding ed is because it's easier to recognize as a verb when I add ed. It does not mean you have to use these all of these in the past tense. That is not the case. I'm sorry if I misled you. No, no, no. Okay. To head, to nail. Uh, we can definitely, this is the action of using a hammer. When you use a hammer, Yes, you can hammer something, but usually what you're hammering is, in fact, a nail. So uh, we actually, the action of using a hammer usually, not always, um, usually we say we nail something. So that also can be a verb. Uh, another point for Heidi. See, Heidi, it is a game. And you're winning two to nothing to nothing. Teacher, what's we nailed? I forgot. What's what? Nailed. Nailed. When you, you do you know what a hammer is? Yeah, I know. Okay. When you hit uh, a nail with a hammer, you nail you nail a board to the wall. For example, you use a nail, that long, thin piece of metal, 
and you hit it with a hammer, you nail something to something else, for example. Huh. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mustafa, how about this one? Legged? Legged? I, I, Would this work? Um, I don't think so. It don't work, maybe. I, I hear legend, but work, no. Yeah. Leg, leg. Le legend, yeah, that's another word. <laughs> leg. For example, four legged animal. Yeah, okay. Now, yes, we can do that. Not a, not a verb, but we can create an adjective. And we do that by hyphenating. Um, we can do that. For example, as Heidi demonstrated, we usually hyphenate it. That's the dash in the middle, a four-legged animal. Okay, for example. But uh, but we uh, can't really use it as a verb. Um, but yes, you can. And let me explain. <laughs> Uh, you may or may not have ever heard of this. Have you ever heard the expression to leg it out? Anybody ever heard of that? I'm gonna leg it out. Run away. Well, it. similar. We're gonna leg it out. Uh, we're we're gonna walk basically, but it we this expression is used. I've only heard leg used as a verb in this expression. And if you're going to leg it out, there's a, I don't know if it's idiomatic or what. I get, yes, it is idiomatic. Um, to leg it out is to give extra effort. All right? You would only use this in a circumstance like, well, the car broke down. All right. We've got to make it to the store before it closes, or we're all going to starve tonight. We need to leg it out. It means we need to walk fast. We need to put in extra effort and go for it. Uh, all right. It is referring to walking, but it's referring to using some extra effort to do it. So I guess this is a verb. I guess it can be used uh, as a verb as a phrase, as part of this phrase. Uh, it's always, it's. I guess it's a phrasal verb, leg out, where our um, object noun is in the middle there. It's, it's an interesting little thing there. Okay, Sasha, how about toe? Toad? <laughs> uh, to touch uh, something by toe. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Do you have an idea where, how this could be used in a sentence? Mm. I uh, toyed uh, my uh, neighbor in, in a bus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, that would work in the butt. Oh, no one said butt. Uh, in the bus. I said in in a bus, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> I like in a bus. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, that's a good one. Um, he towed the ball. This is another one. When you kick a ball, like in football, okay, you're not really supposed to use your toes. You use your instep, the top of your foot. This is a more common... I have no, no problem with Saucer's example. That works. I would understand that instantly. I don't really have a problem with that. This is really common. He towed the ball. Uh, he makes a shot on goal, and it's obvious that he didn't kick it properly. Okay? If, you, you don't, if any of you have ever played football, you know you do not kick the ball with your toes. That's totally wrong. In fact, you could bust your toe doing that. You could, you could hurt yourself. So this is actually common. You'll hear sports announcers say this phrase quite a bit in American football as well when they're cooking, kicking field goals. You cannot, you cannot 
kick a field goal in American football with your toe. It, it will not work. He towed the ball. Uh, next one is interesting. Pavel, can you foot something? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, it means uh, uh, pay, pay for something. Uh, Very good. You are absolutely correct. Uh, That's right. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, for example, I paid the bill. I paid uh, this fin. Yeah, that's it. I footed the bill. Okay. Ah, that's yes. Sure. Instead of paid, if you foot the bill, that means you pay all of it. You probably are paying a bill in behalf of many people. Um, not necessarily. You could foot the. I footed the bill for my brother to stay at the hotel. You could be paying for one person. So, very good, Pavel. I didn't think anybody would know that. Um, but he, that he's perfectly correct, and this is quite an ordinary word, really, to foot the bill. All right, point for you, Pavel. Uh, okay. Uh, Heidi. Now, here, <laughs> Adam's <laughs> apple. Can you Adam's <laughs> apples? I Adam's apples. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think this is going to work. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, I don't think you can Adam's apple something. I don't know how. I don't think that's going to work. Can you apple something? I don't think so. No. no. Sorry. Uh, no opportunity there. But of course, the next one, Mustafa. Uh, handed. Handed. Yeah. Handed. Okay. Handed. Can that be a verb? Can be. Sorry, you, you broke up slightly. It, it can be the verb. Can be it verb. can be. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Can you use it in a sentence? Uh, like you handed someone. Again, please. Sorry. You handed someone. You handed someone what? <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> uh, you handed someone a cigarette. Okay, yeah. you pass something from someone to someone else. Can you hand me that pencil? I may ask you. Okay. Uh, okay, you you hand it. You 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 grab it and you move it towards the person, and they grab it with their hand. You hand something to someone else. All right. Uh, what does it mean, however, uh, Mustafa, if I say, I've got to hand it to you? Not literally, but idiomatically. I've got to hand it for you. No, uh, to you. It's got to be to you. Give it to me. No, there's an idiomatic expression, I've got to hand it to you. It means uh, I've got to give you credit. Uh, I've got to give you credit. It's a, it's we say this idiomatically to praise someone. All right. Mm. I got to hand it to you. You did a great job on the report. Really, I could not have done a better job. It was really terrific. Uh, so it's also used. This verb of hand is also used idiomatically. This is a so, pretty so common expression. Yeah, so teacher, you just say uh, like I I've got it to I've got to hand it to you. Just this, just like this, and that's mean you give him him like credit credit or praise him. Mm -hmm. uh, or or you could say it about you know in the third person. I've got to hand it to Pavel. He did a great job with a foot, like that. Uh, sure. Also, hand as a verb can does have a phrasal verb. Handoff is another verb, okay, which is very similar to just hand. 
but we use handoff a lot in sports. Uh, it's more hmm, subtle, <laughs> sneaky. Uh, spies may hand off secret information from one to another. It's kind of secret. Or a rugby player hands off the ball to his teammate. Or American football, a handoff is a very well-known term. It's a common play, a uh, handoff. How about, how, how about that, like, you know what, like, to go hand in hand? Go hand in hand. Uh, sure. That's another idiomatic expression. Um, sure. Uh, go hand in hand. Um, well, how would you use that, Mustafa, since you brought it up? It's like two things that go together. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Perfect. You know, paper and pencil go hand in hand. They go together. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's actually a lot of expressions, a lot of um, metaphorical or idiomatic expressions with hand. Uh, hand up. You give someone a, a hand off. Uh, is a phrasal verb, hand off, hand up, hand over. There's actually a lot here, the more I think about it. You give somebody a hand up, you help them. Um, you hand over, you surrender something. You hand over the prisoner. Actually, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, you have the main word can be a verb, and there's a bunch of phrasal verbs as well. Okay, uh, let's keep this moving. Sasha, um, but armed. Uh, as a, uh, I don't know exactly, but probably it deals with uh, the word army. Uh, these two words have the same root. Uh, kind of. Yeah, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, of course. But I don't know the right uh, idea how I can use this word. Um, okay. Well, let, me, well, let me help you. Arms, of course, are those two things attached to your shoulders. You know that. But yes. arms are also weapons, which, in, in fact, you're exactly right. It has to do with the army. You're right. Arms, as a noun now, as a noun, also means weapons. So... If you are armed, as an adjective, that means you have weapons. The, okay. An arm, armed and dangerous person. So if you arm someone, you give them weapons. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Like, uh, mm -hmm, the, uh, okay, who would do this? The, uh, the what? Officer or a soldier. Hmm? A soldier armed. Who? Um, the villagers. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. The military armed the villagers. All right, they gave the people of the village weapons, guns, whatever. Okay. Okay, so when you arm somebody, you give them weapons. Okay. Very, very good. Now, uh, regarding armpitted... <laughs> armpitted... <laughs> okay, Pavel? <laughs> uh, I have no idea, but maybe it means... Uh, uh, press something or squeeze something. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to, how to make that obnoxious noise by putting your hand under your armpit and squeezing it really fast? <laughs> no. You know what? I don't know of any use for armpitted. Uh, I know uh, definitely arm and pitted is definitely a verb. Do you know what that means? To pit? You know what that means? Hold on. Hole. What? Sorry, Heidi. Hole. 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 No, 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 no. A pit is a hole. That's right. Make but hole. Uh, no. 
Um, no, that's a very good guess, but no, it's not. It's totally completely unrelated to that. A pit means a hole as a noun, a hole in the ground usually. Um, how about this? To pit one against the other. To if you you pit one against the other, it means that you, you face them off to fight each other, compete with each other. Okay, to pit one against the other is all right. Uh, the first match pits the Golden Destroyer, Gold Dust. Will now fight against. Oh, who's another wrestler? Um. Oh, uh, the Undertaker. Well, now it p is now pitted against Gold Dust. Okay, versus one against the other. Pit against, uh, and we and we use it like a phrasal verb. Pit someone against. Pit against the other person. It can also mean. Uh, this is very okay. Uh, the race car needs to pit. Uh, okay, the in a in a car race, the car occasionally the car will have to stop and get more gas or change his tires. Guess what he's doing? The action he's doing is pitting. He needs to pit because, uh, and we can use that. Actually, comes from a totally different usage. This um, this compound noun, pit stop. Okay, uh, I guess it's supposed to be two words. Pit stop. Pit stop is what race cars do when they stop to get gas in the middle of a race. It is also what you do when you're taking a trip by car and you stop to go to the bathroom. I've got to make a pit stop. Or if you're on your way home and you need to stop at the store to get some milk, it would be very normal to say, I need to stop and make a pit I need to make a pit stop and pick up some milk. Okay. So armpitted, no, we we can't do that. There's there's nothing there. Equally, uh, Heidi, belly buttoned. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> however, Look however, yeah. Um, however, which one? Close the shut and the button. Button. Okay, so in a sentence. Button and um, button. Okay, he, he buttoned his shirt like that. Yeah. Sure. Button shut. Sure. Now that can um. That can definitely be a verb, the action, when you snap your buttons. Um, okay, how about, but Heidi, how about this one? How about Ellie? Mm, you eat too much, no? To eat too much. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> no. Does anybody know? How, how could I use belly to belly? And in fact, uh, I'll give you a clue. We usually use it as a phrasal verb, bellied up. To belly up. <laughs> Lay down. I uh, you know. Lay down. Uh, <laughs> to dance. Here, I'll give you a sentence. See if you can figure it out. Uh, let's belly up. <laughs> to dance. That's good. Let's belly up to the bar and have a shot. All right. This is actually a fairly common expression. Belly up to the bar, that means you, you're going to go sit at the bar, not at a table. You're going to stand next to the bar. If you're standing next to the bar, you're, you know, your belly's kind of even with the bar. Um, Okay, it's also used idiomatically to say, um, well, volunteer. Let's, oh, let's try it. Let's belly up and give it a try. You're kind of volunteering to do something when you belly up. Uh, very strange one, right? Mm -hmm. You guys didn't know that one. Okay, 
there's a new one for you. Uh, Mustafa, how about Palm? Mm, it's gonna be as a verb. Um, oh, I do. Um, <laughs> uh, does anybody know this one? As a verb to palm something. No? Nobody knows this one? Oh, this is a good one to know. The magician palmed the coin. Okay? You know, you guys know that action. You know when a magic magician moves his hand around and he's got a coin in his hand and suddenly the coin disappears. Guess what? He's palming the coin. He's moving the coin so that you can't see it. Uh... This action actually has a verb. There's a word for this. When you make something kind of disappear in your hand, magicians, are. this is what they do. They misdirect you and they palm something. They make it disappear from your vision. And this is, this is the verb <laughs> that describes that. Okay, we don't say they, they hid the coin, they moved the coin, they disappeared the coin. No, they palmed the coin. Mustafa, have you ever seen a magician before? Yeah. Yeah? Did he palm something? Mm, no. No? Are you, are you sure? Because that's pretty much what they do. <laughs> so, so just with coin? The magician? No, 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 no. It could be, it could be a coin, could be your watch, could be important papers. Magician or a thief, frankly, a thief can uh, also palm your whatever. Oh, so it's like moving, right? Yeah, you're moving your hand around. Now you see it, now you don't. Uh, yeah, I saw. So that I saw. I I thought it was uh, it is like with coin only. Uh, so yeah. Oh no. Uh, they they do that with cups maybe sometimes and sometimes with a lot of things you know. A lot of things. And who does this? Magicians. This is interesting because only this the subject nouns who do this action are only only magicians or thieves. <laughs> the rest of us have no reason to make things disappear. Things in plain sight disappear by putting it in our, our own pocket or moving it around to where no one's looking. Okay. Next one, Sasha. How about oh, shoulder? It's, it's clear. Uh, it's like uh, to take a responsibility on Excellent. one's shoulders. So, for Very instance, um, uh, mother uh, sho uh, uh, sh shoulders uh, for uh, for shoulders shoulder uh, shoulder it uh, or shoulders. Well, what she? What is she shoulder? Um, um. Responsibility. You were right the first time when you were describing it. Uh, very, very commonly, the object noun for shoulders is responsibility. Yeah. For 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 her shouts. Yeah. For instance, uh, and probably a mother, or. Yeah. You're probably right. Uh, okay, very good. A mother shoulders responsibility for her child. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, exactly. Uh, in fact, uh, idiomatically, somebody who takes on a lot of responsibility, we say he has strong shoulders. We don't really mean physically. He has muscles in his back. We probably mean that he's taking a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. That, that was interesting. Uh, all right, we we still got a lot of time. How about uh, how about we try the same deal with uh, animals? Another very simple category of nouns. 
Uh, teacher, will you uh, share this document with us? Uh, <laughs> um, I could. If you want to find me in the... Um, I can save it, and then if any of you guys find me in... It's not like it's hard to find me. If you want to send me a message... In, in Verbling chat. In Verbling chat, yeah, from the... Uh, from the one-on-one -on -one tutoring page, for example, just send me a message. Can you can you send me that? Okay. That, okay. that verb document. I will save it as it is when I'm done, and I can share it with you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Sure. Uh, no problem. Let's try it again. Let's talk about animals. Can we can we convert some nouns? Animals are nouns, obviously. Uh, can we convert some of these to verbs? Pavel, let's talk animals. Hmm. Horse. Ah, good one. Heidi. Lion. Uh. <laughs> Mustafa. Mustafa, are you there? I think we lost Mustafa again. All right, Sasha. Um. Uh. Well. well uh, uh. Hedgehog, for instance. <laughs> hedgehog. What? Okay. Hedgehog. Okay. Pavel. Uh. Sheep. Uh, okay. Uh, hmm. All right. Uh, Heidi. Cat. Okay. Great. Mustafa, are you still there? You, you struggling over there? All right. Don't know. Sasha. A uh, goat. Uh, okay. Let's take one more round. Uh, Pavel. Uh, oh, uh, no, no, it's not animal. Uh, <laughs> jeopard. What? Jeop, uh, leopard, probably. Jeopard. What? Deer? No, no, uh, okay. Spell it. Uh, Gel part or level part, I don't know the exact pronunciation. Leopard. Ah, leopard. Okay. Leopard. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When uh, in English we don't really pronounce this O, it just sounds like leopard. 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 Yeah, we don't even, uh, it's not even R, it's just erd. Leopard. Leopard. Like that. Got it. Um, all right. Uh, uh, Heidi? Mm, camel. Again? Camel. Camel. Okay. <laughs> mm. uh, Mustafa, are you there? Nope. Okay. Don't know what happened to our friend Mustafa. Uh, okay, Sasha? Uh, hyena. <laughs> hyena. A hyena, okay. Uh, I don't uh, know the exact pronunciation of this word, okay. Okay. It sounds like hyena. It's actually three syllables. Hyena. Hyena. Hyena, okay. okay. Very small word to be three syllables, but it is. Uh, okay, well, I think we've got a lot of... Um, we've got a lot of dead words here. Uh, but let's start with a horse. Pavel? Yes. Uh, I, I can't imagine. You can't imagine? Uh, maybe uh, uh, go, not go, uh, not right. Uh, well, maybe, maybe right. 
Well, uh, one thing you, you may have noticed from our previous uh, list, the body parts, a lot of them could be used as a verb when they were being used as a phrasal verb, and this is another such case. How about this, Pavel? Have you ever heard of horsed around? Uh, look around, maybe. Look or, yes, looking around. No, no, no. I'll tell you who horses around. Uh, little children and, uh, well, drunk people. Uh, to kind of fool around in a sort of a dangerous way. Does anybody know this? Anybody else? Anybody else familiar with this? No? Uh, all right. Uh, here we go. The kids Sorry? need... All right? Exploration. It's more uh, something. I uh, know. No, it's uh, to to play in a very uh, kind not well, yeah, a little bit violent manner, irresponsible. The kids need to stop horsing around near the pool, for example, before somebody gets hurt. Okay. Uh, they spent, or it means um, just wasting time. You spent all afternoon horsing around. You didn't get a thing done. Horse around usually is talking about kids. They jump on top of each other, and they're wrestling, and they're trying to trip each other. They're horsing around. Uh, okay. By the way, because it's related, I'll also give you this one, since it's also an animal. Monkey around. This really means wasting time. Stop monkeying around. Come on. Fix it. Fix the car already. What are you monkeying around with that for? That's not going to do anything. Stop pulling out the spark plugs. The problem's not with the spark plugs. It's with the fan. Stop monkeying around. You're totally wasting time when you monkey around. All right. Horse around. This is... Teacher, Quite common. Sorry. Here yeah. Sorry, teacher. Sorry. Sorry. Like monk monkey no around, like uh, playing with time or uh, just like horsing around? Well, mm. more like completely wasting time in, in any sense. If you're monkeying around, you're completely wasting time. You're probably doing something, but what you're doing accomplishes nothing. Okay. okay. Um. All right, he spent, okay, if you know anything about graphic artists, graphic artists start monkeying around with the pixels, and they're moving three pixels back and forth. No, it looks better like this. No, it looks better like that. I might tell the graphic artist, stop monkeying around. I need this website up and running by 3 o'clock. Why are you moving three pixels? Cut okay. it out. All right, like that. Okay. Mm, next one, uh, Heidi. How about lion? Can I lion? Not really. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. However, uh, I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, some what? Like lion share our. Right. I, I, you can't lion. Um, I don't know how to spell this. Mm -hmm. Like that, I guess. Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess like that. Okay, I can add a different ending uh, suffix. That's an ending at the end of a word, common uh, letters that we use to end a word. This I-Z-E, or British use I-S-E, Americans use I-Z-E. This, this is a common suffix for verbs. This creates a verb from a noun. So actually, I can take lion and I can... Uh, uh, lion, no. Lion by itself, not a verb. But lionize, yeah. Well, Heidi, any idea what lionize means? Lionize. Yeah. Um, like both. Um, um, that uh, make behavior like both. No. Yeah, That's a darn good guess. What's that? <laughs> um, probably uh, idolize uh, something. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. 
right. Like, uh, exactly. Uh, right. Uh, give a lot of public attention. Treat somebody as a celebrate. You acclaim them. You praise them. You allow them. You lionize them. That's it. Exactly. Uh, okay. Um, okay. H how about this? After his death, he was lionized mm -hmm. by the media. This happens all the time, right? Somebody died. Either the greatest person on earth. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. And even though nobody cared about him before he died, suddenly he's lionized but by the media. He was a great door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Now I don't know about this next one, uh, uh, Sasha. Probably uh, to protect uh, oneself from others by using sharp <laughs> words or sharp objects or, or, or to have uh, a deep uh, breath as has a hog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um, it's very similar. I don't know what you call them in Japan. I th I'm pretty sure you have them, but in America we call it a porcupine. Uh, weird spelling, yeah, with a U, that's it. Porcupine, a hedgehog is something different, but I know what you mean. A porcupine has quills, like needles sticking out. That's what, Sasha, that's what you think of when you think of a hedgehog, right? Um, I don't know the, uh, this uh, animal, uh, the last animal that you type in the, uh, in the document. I think it's pretty much the same thing as a hedgehog but uh, uh, in North and South America. It's pretty big. It's like the size of a... Oh, I see. I get it. Uh, I get it. Uh, no, I mean a small animal. Um, ah. the, it's a very okay. popular... It's, it's very popular in Russia, for instance, where I'm from. Okay. Uh, sure. A porcupine can be like 20 to 30 kilos. They're big. I get it. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, but anyway, hedgehog, porcupine, no, we don't have words for either of those. But let's just take, uh, how about hog? Sasha? Um, how about hog? To hog something. Oh, I did not match this uh, phrase before. Probably I met, but I don't remember. Okay. Does anybody else know? If you hog something, can anybody else use this in a sentence? No. He he hogged all the cookies. He took all the cookies. Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah. He hogged all the cookies. Didn't leave any for anybody else. All right. Um, to make a hog, a hog is a very large pig. A pig is a pig is a pig, but a hog okay, is a okay, big one. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I have a question. Uh, can we use, uh, for instance, uh, the word "head to hog" for uh, to describe uh, someone uh, uh, <laughs> uh, as a person? Uh, I okay. That's that gives me pause. That makes me think. I don't. I don't think so. But I, I'm. I don't. I'm not familiar with it. I don't okay. know. Maybe. Maybe British people do. Uh, I, I don't know. It seems like a very reasonable idea to me because they act in a very specific and peculiar way. So it seems like it should be, but I'm not familiar with it. So, okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It seems like it should be, though. <laughs> it's a uh, fine uh, animal <laughs> before I asked. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's very specific and peculiar. Uh, okay, uh, next one here. Pavel, can you sheep? <laughs> sheep. Uh, yes, I think. Uh, uh, maybe it's a uh, uh, herd. Uh, no. No, I don't think so. We can't, <laughs> we can't sheep anything. Uh, 
I think we got a lot of losers here. But um, Heidi, can you cat? No. <laughs> no. Actually, uh, if I change it to another one, okay, like horse around, around. Heidi, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what it means if you cat around? If someone cats around? Sneak around? Yeah, well, yeah, that's very close. Sneak around, and um, if <laughs> he or she is catting around, they're sneaking around having lots of sex. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's right. Oh, he's been catting around town ever since he got divorced. Yep. Meow. <laughs> okay. You know, you people know what I'm talking about. All right. Yeah, to cat around. Definitely to sneak around, you're absolutely right. But the idea is you're sneaking around, getting busy. Uh, okay. Goaded? Uh, I don't think so. We have goaded, but that's... That's different. Nope. Can't do it. Uh, leopard? Nope. Leoparded? Nope. That's not going to work. Nope. Uh, Camelled? No. Hyena? No. <laughs> Hyena would, should be one, I think. Uh, and Camel would be a good one as well. Uh, okay. This does not exist as a verb. Camel. Okay. However, if it did, <laughs> what would it mean? Um, do you know what... Uh, who gave me camel, anyway? Heidi, was that you? Uh, yeah. What, yeah. Is, what is a camel... <laughs> do you know what a camel pack is? Camel pack? Uh, um, cam camel... Uh, like kind of a new thing. To uh, the inside the back, um, bump. Yeah. They have natural bump. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. A camel pack is a kind of a backpack. Mm. Um, this has come, become popular in I don't know, ten or fifteen years. It has um, it has a long tube. You use it for hiking, and it has a like a bag you can. So as you're hiking, you can just drink out of basically a straw. It's called a camel pack. It's a backpack that also holds water. You can drink out of a straw. So it's very handy for like hiking or, or skiing. It's great for skiing, actually, as well. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, I don't think it can be used as a verb, sorry to say. <laughs> and, and although hyena cannot either, it should although I don't know how you would spell it, uh, to hyena, to laugh. Of course, you can laugh like a hyena. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I don't think it can be used as a verb. In any case, uh, there's a lot of very common... Uh, we didn't have we didn't have time, but if if we did have time, I'd probably look at tools as well. That's another one. Some some categories. There's a lot of very common nouns which we also know as uh, verbs. Oh, another good one is food. You would you would you would be very surprised to know that there are many foods that can actually be a verb. Strangely enough, but. Maybe we'll save that for another class because we're about out of time for today. Uh, um, the work we did today, I will be happy to share that. But we are out of time for now, so I will bid you adieu and say thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much, too.